Welcome to my next video on the newfangled mill wizards for mock version 4. Um, in the first video I gave you a general overview of how the product worked. In this video I'd like to go through a few of the specific configurations and talk a little bit more about the job file capability. First in the config menu up here uh, well, let's look at the tool table. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a tool table. Uh, the table gives us the uh, surface feet per minute value that we'd want to use for a particular material and a particular tool type. Now this table is for you to edit to the materials that you use. We filled it in with some kind of default values here. Um, I think they might be a bit aggressive values, but that's the way Brian likes to cut things. So you'll certainly want to look at this table and edit it for the particular materials that you use. So click up on the configuration screen, edit it, and you're all set. Now the one warning here, um, they do have to be entered in surface feet per minute, even if you intend most of your work to be done in the metric system. Um, we have to enter the material table in surface feet per minute. Uh, just so that we know we have some kind of standard in the program. The conversions will take care of, uh, will be taken care of by the program when they're needed. So that's the material table. Um, Brian chided me a little bit about the first video that I had kind of a dull gray screen. So let's show you the toolpath color screen. Um, we can pick uh, a couple of colors here. We can make our toolpath screen have a kind of um, oh, let's see, let's try that. Kind of a, a variegated background here. We can also set the color for our rapid line and arc move. So how's that for a more colorful toolpath screen? Now I mentioned in the first video that we were going to try to add a tool table in the future. Well, I guess Brian couldn't get to sleep last night because this morning we have a tool table added to the program. Uh, table allows room for 128 values, which should be adequate for most of us. Um, tool diameter, number of flutes, the type of material, the ramp angle, and a comment that just appears as a descriptive comment in the uh, line and in the uh, G-code. Uh, you're free to edit this, add all the tools you need, all the tools that you want to use. Um, it can be saved in a file. You can browse for a file, open and create a new file, or edit this one and save it. So you have pretty full flexibility to manipulate your tool table file. Okay, I mentioned last time that we had the ability to save a job file. And one of the ways you might use that, if you have a common part that you frequently make, but you make in various sizes, you might set up a job as sort of a template for that part. Um, I've set up a job here that um, is kind of like a pipe flange. I've, I've made a number of pipe flanges in, in models. So uh, let's open my pipe flange job. Now I could open the job by using the job open menu, but I can also do drag and drop and simply drop it onto the tool table, onto the uh, program anywhere. Well, there's my um, pipe flange. If you look, it's got a hole in the center, it's got a bolt circle around the periphery, and then it's got a cutout around the outside. And if you tip it, um, you can see the uh, rapid movements. You can see the depth of cut. One thing to note here, we mentioned the ramping in. Here you can see the sort of zigzag ramp pattern on these uh, circular cutouts we made. So that's our, our bolt circle job ready to go. Now it looks to me like the uh, counter bores here might be kind of small. Notice that the job consists of first the whole circle probably done with a center or spotting drill, then a tool change to a real drill, then a whole circle drilled with the larger drill for the bolt size, then another tool change to an end mill, and then the same bolt circle, only this time cutting out circles um, instead of drilling. So we're cutting a circle pocket, then using that same end mill, we'll cut out the center and finally cut out the outside. Um, 
if we want to edit this, I could go in and look, and there's all my settings that I don't need to change. But let's enlarge that counter bore uh, to three quarters of an inch. And that looks a little more like the right kind of counter bore for that size pipe flange. So you can see that we've opened a job file, made a change in the job file rather quickly, and uh, we're now ready to uh, either look at the G-code, uh, and you'll notice all of the comments that I've mentioned in the G-code, or we're ready to save the G-code and run the product. So that's a, another look at some of the configuration abilities and our ability to save and load job files or template files um, into the program and generate G-code from them. This is a, a totally new capability and I think we're going to find it a very useful ability for the program. Well, thank you for watching this, and we'll have a couple of future videos about some of the actual operations the program is capable of.